Hi everyone, and welcome again to the Oracle Data Guard course. We have learned how to build an Oracle Physical Standby database and also configured the broker in it. In this lecture, we will learn about how to manage physical standby databases. For a physical standby database, in this lecture, you will learn how to do the following. Start or stop redo apply services. Specify time delay in the redo apply. Upgrade or downgrade the protection mode. Handle no logging operations. Protect, detect, and recover from data corruption. When you want to start the redo services, the standby database must be in mount state. Redo apply services can be started in real time or with a delay. By running in real time, we mean the redo received from the primary database will be applied as soon as they are received by the standby database. You can change that and make the redo apply process wait for some delay time before applying the redo. Also, Redo apply process can be issued in a foreground session or as a background session. If you start the redo apply process as foreground session, control is not returned to the command prompt until the process is stopped by another session. On the other hand, when the redo apply services run as a background process, it will create its own session, different from the session you used to start the process. In most real life scenarios, you will always need to start the redo apply services in the background. In SQL Plus, to start the real time redo apply services as a foreground session, you issue the statement alter database recover managed standby database. To start them in the background, you use the following format of the statement. Alter database, recover managed standby database, disconnect. To start the redo apply process and allow a delay in applying the redo, you issue the following command. Alter database, recover managed standby database using archived log disconnect. You set the time delay on the primary and standby databases using the delay attribute of the log archive destination initialization parameter. If you start the apply process in real time, the delay attribute will be ignored. If your data guard configuration is managed by the broker, to start the redo apply services, issue the following command in the dgmgrl command line. Edit database followed by the standby database name, Set state equal to apply on. If you want to set a redo apply delay, let's say 10 minutes, issue the following statement. Edit database or IDB underscore is 2. Set delay means equal to 10. In SQL plus to stop the redo apply, use the following statement. Alter database, recover managed standby database, cancel. If you're using the broker to manage your data guard configuration, issue the following command in the dgmgrl command line. Edit database followed by the standby database name, set state equal to apply off. We have seen examples of how to set a delay in redo apply services. When you set it, the MRP process waits for the specified time before it applies the redo. This can be useful to protect against the application of corrupted or erroneous data to the standby database. The reporting operations that may run in the standby database site will not generate its report based on the most updated data. A better solution than using the delay feature is the flashback database. Flashback database allows you to restore to a failure point of time without sacrificing having the up-to-date data in the standby database side. 
if you still want to use the redo apply delay feature you must start the redo apply using the following command alter database recover managed standby database using archived log file disconnect to use the redo apply delay option set the delay attribute of the log archive destination initialization parameter to cancel the time delay, issue the command alter database recover manage the standby database no delay. If you are using the broker, use the delay means database property of the standby database. We have seen an example of how to change this property in a previous slide. Before talking about how to change the protection mode, Let's have a little reminder about what are the protection modes in Oracle Data Guard and what are the differences between them. As we discussed early in the course, in Oracle Data Guard we have three protection modes maximum performance, maximum availability, and maximum protection. Maximum performance gives priority to performance. Transactions in the primary database do not wait for acknowledgement from the standby database to commit. On the other hand, if the primary database failed and you switch over to the standby database, there is a possibility of losing some data. Maximum availability gives its priority to the high availability and it gives its second priority to the standby protection. Transactions in the primary database do wait for acknowledgement from the standby database before they commit. If the standby database becomes unavailable or the network between the database goes down, the primary database will operate as in maximum performance mode. This means the transactions will proceed as normal and they will not hang or stop. Meanwhile, the Redo transport service in the primary database will keep trying every net underscore timeout seconds to connect to the standby database. Net timeout is an attribute of the log archive destination parameter. If the standby database becomes available again, the transport services will reconnect to the standby database and the configuration will operate in maximum availability mode again. Maximum protection has only one concern, that is the data protection. As with the maximum availability mode, transactions in the primary database wait for acknowledgement from the standby database before they commit. But if the standby database becomes unavailable, the primary database will abort. This mode doesn't tolerate any data loss when you switch over to the standby database. If you want to use this protection in real life, usually you would have two standby databases. Use the commands as shown in the slide to upgrade or downgrade the protection mode in your data guard configuration. You can see the commands for the SQL Plus and the DGMGRL utility. To know which protection mode your data guard configuration is running, Issue the following query. Select protection mode from $sign database. If you want to change the protection mode in your data guard configuration to maximum performance, you must set the log XPT mode to a sync. If you want to change it to maximum availability mode, the property must be set to sync. No logging operations should not be used under any case in the primary database. No logging options is available in the following statements. Create table as select or CTAS. Create alter index. Alter table move or split partition. SQL load or SQL loader utility. And insert a statement with a pinned hint. Usually developers use this option for performance purposes. All those statements usually complete sooner when no logging option is used. 
if you still issue a no logging statement in the primary database and the force logging option is not enabled, only the redo describing the range of blocks being changed will be generated. In this case, the standby database will report soft corrupt. You will see in the alert log of the standby database errors similar to the ones demonstrated in the slide. When data guard is considered, always enable force logging option in the database. You do that by running the statement alter database force logging. You can use the view the dollar sign data file to monitor for no logging operations on the primary database. On the standby database side, you can monitor the alert file for the errors ORA01578 and ORA26040. If you face the worst scenario where you didn't enable the forced logging option in the primary database, and some no logging operations executed in the primary database. In this case, you can try implementing the procedure demonstrated in the slide to recover from this situation. First, you have to check the unrecoverable change in the $sign data file view in both databases. It should be higher in the primary database than it is in the standby database. Secondly, you check which data files are affected by the no-logging operation and take them offline. Then you take a copy of the affected data files and move the copy to the standby database. On the standby database, you stop the redo apply. After that, you restore the data files. And finally, you start the redo apply. As you see, this procedure involves taking some data files offline, and you better avoid falling into this issue. If you would like to use physical standby database for protection against data corruption, consider setting the DB ultra safe parameter to true in both databases. This parameter sets the values of the parameters as displayed in the slide DB block checksum, DB block checking, and lost right to protect. However, this usually has a slight performance impact. You therefore should test its influence before you apply it in production. For further details, refer to the document ID 1302539.1 in the Oracle support site. Its title is Best Practices for Corruption Detection, Prevention, and Automatic Repair in a Data Guard Configuration. If a physical block corruption is raised in the primary database, the apply process will automatically stop. You, as a DBA, want to know a way to verify that the apply process is up and running. One tool can be used to do that is the $sign data guard stats view. You retrieve the apply lag and the transport lag from that view. If that lag is increasing, then most likely the apply process is stopped. Another tool is the V$ sign recovery progress view. From that view, you can check the last applied redo. We will demonstrate using those views in more details in monitoring data guard configuration lecture. Physical standby database can assist you in recovering from block corruption in many ways. First, you have the automatic block repair. If you use Active Data Guard, it automatically performs block media recovery. Active Data Guard repairs physically corrupted block on a primary database using a good version of the block retrieved from the standby database. Oracle Active Data Guard is a feature on the Data Guard where you can open the physical standby database for read-only operations while the redo is being received and applied in the same time. This enables you to have updated data in the standby database side for the reporting tools. This option, however, requires a separate license. Another way in which the physical standby database can help you in recovering from corrupted data 
is the capability of restoring corrupted data files in the primary database from the standby database. A backup taken from the standby database can be used to restore the data files in the primary database. A third method is to switch over to the standby database, and then you diagnose the issue in the primary database. You can also reinstate the primary database. In a different lecture, we will learn more about Active Data Guard option, and we will also perform a primary database reinstate process. In this lecture, we have learned how to perform the following for a physical standby database. Start or stop Redo Apply services. Specify time delay in the Redo Apply. Upgrade or downgrade protection mode. Handle no logging operations. And describe how to use the physical standby database for recovering from data corruption. Thank you so much for watching and see you in the next practice lecture.